to Straight Talk with Supply Chain Insights. My name is Laura Ciceri and I'm the founder of Supply Chain Insights. And today it gives me great pleasure to have a guest on the show that I met seven years ago on an airplane for the first time. And it's Hannah Kane, and she is the CEO of Alam, and they do outsource supply chain. So let me just tell you a little bit about my first meeting. It was a horrible day. I was in Detroit. I was flying from Detroit to the West Coast. I sat down, and in casual conversation, Hannah said that she worked in supply chain. And normally, people can't really talk supply chain, but I found a new best friend to talk supply chain. So Hannah, welcome to the show, and tell the group a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Laura, and I'm so happy to be here. And it was a fun coincidence that we met that way. But uh, listen, there's only so many there are only so many women in supply chain. So I was tickled to find a, a sister in in the field. I started my journey in Denmark, and that's where my funny accent is from. I was actually born in the town of uh, Odense, uh, which is the town of Hans Christian Andersen, the fairy tale author. And I always say I leave it to him to make things up. Uh, so I'm uh, pretty grounded. I uh, bought a one-way ticket in 1990 to the U.S. and landed in Silicon Valley in '94. You know, I was really excited to be in Silicon Valley. It was a big growth period. I ended up uh, getting into the intersection between the physical space and the technology space. Really an interesting area. And in 97, I started ALAM together with other supply chain executives. We've grown it to now be working out of 19 locations globally, serving mainly Fortune 100 customers. And we take on their entire uh, supply chain uh, for the projects we are working on. So when I talked to you uh, many years ago, uh, you were flying out of Detroit and you'd had some great meetings with automotive, but I understand you also do work for business to business technology, medical device, uh, automotive aftermarket, automotive, and anybody else that might need outsourced supply chain help, right? That is correct. And, you know, here during the pandemic, it's been uh, really rewarding for us to be part of the solution to the pandemic. When the pandemic started, I, I set six goals for Elam and for myself. One of them was to be part of the solution to the pandemic. And so we have very deep domain expertise in the test kit market. And so right now we are shipping literally millions of of COVID test kits every week to help uh, curb the pandemic. So it's been very rewarding to be part of such a crucial effort. It's also, to be honest, a little bit scary because literally if we do not ship, people may die. And so the the burden you feel of being in supply chain really comes home uh, to you when when, uh, it's so crucial to ship. Well, you're one of my top five supply chain women leaders, and I admire your guts. I mean, you know, moving from Denmark, starting a company back before supply chain was really well known, and then building a different business model. You know, some people talk about outsourcing transportation, some people talk about outsourcing manufacturing, but you're outsourcing supply chain for people. Tell the group a little bit about your career. How did you end up in this path? And reflection back about the choices you made. My friends were very amazed when I started Elam. They they felt it was a weird industry to be in. And what are you doing there? And now they are very excited about where we are at. So I had this weird vision about, I had several things I was thinking about when I started uh, Elam. One of them was, can can we create a company that's really very collaborative, that takes into account everybody in the supply chain and makes uh, them really work together and be integrated, et cetera. And how can we use technology as part of that? So that was sort of one group of thinking. Then it was, can we do right by everybody? So that's what today is called corporate social responsibility or ESG or, you know, lots of good names for it. But how can we do right by everybody in the supply chain? Not just uh, the staff, but certainly they are are first on the list, but also suppliers, clients, and of course, a greater community and the world. And so, and then I had this idea, maybe maybe we can get... uh, 
a package out next day to, uh, to uh, every place in the world. And people were really thinking I was crazy. Today, it's not so crazy. So it, it, from here, starting Elon was really about the vision. But how did I get into supply chain? I think it's a combination of the fascination of the physical and the digital. Right? And, and, and people for many years forgot all about the digital supply chain, but the digital supply chain is just as important as the physical supply chain. And today, maybe even more so. So the integration between those two threads really always fascinated me. And, you know, like many in supply chain, I like the three-dimensional, the, t- the tactile, the I can touch things, but I also like the technology. So merging those two things has been really fascinating. Like most women, I don't have a linear career. Uh, so, uh, and I think it's, it's true for everybody these days, but especially maybe in my generation, uh, women never took a linear career. We tried a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and we, we merged it together. And I think that's actually a really healthy thing in supply chain because there's so many stakeholders in supply chain. And so understanding, for instance, the marketing side, the demand uh, side of supply chain is equally as uh, important as understanding the manufacturing side or the procurement side or the the transportation side or the technology side. So, you know, I think it it creates a very whole person. So um, uh, most people, most successful uh, women I know have not been very linear in their their careers. They've tried a little bit of each. I agree with you. And my experience was anything but linear. And most students that I talk to want a very linear, deliberate career path. What advice would you have for them? Oh, uh, first of all, I think uh, supply chain is a fantastic uh, field to enter. It's, you know, there's a work work shortage and a talent shortage right now. So coming into supply chain is just fantastic. Uh, You get... um, you, you get a lot of opportunities. So being in a growth field has many advantages as you get into the career. It's a very broad field, so you get an opportunity to try different things. It's uh, also when we do the projections out to the future, there's also a talent crisis there. So so I think uh, career opportunities are just fantastic. Overall, it's a well-paying field. The new salary survey just came out and I saw that the, the salary gap still is there between the genders. So that's definitely a thing for the industry to look, at, look uh, out for. But overall, I think uh, going to supply chain, it's, uh, it's really a fantastic field. Uh, try different things. Uh, be open. Take stretch assessments. Learn from others. It's one of the key things uh, that I've done in the jobs back when I was gainfully employed before I became an entrepreneur. I, I would... Uh, be in different jobs and I would learn from everybody. Sometimes, regrettably, you learn how not to do things, but essentially you can learn from everybody and you can really go home and think about what, what was behind these, these decisions. And I've been very fortunate in my career in creating what you could call formal and informal mentors. Uh, so um, uh, people who are willing to share their thinking and I've always asked questions to try to learn what they what they were thinking, what were the problems they were following, what were the opportunities they saw, why did they make the decisions they made. So sitting next to somebody uh, and seeing which decision they make is just key. Well, I was impressed on that flight to California that you asked really good questions and you asked really good questions with a smile and a spark. And you're a good listener. And um, I think those are invaluable skills. And I think you care. I love that. But my research shows that only 35% of managers and above in supply chain are female and that the wage gap is still about 30%. Does that match what you see? Uh, yeah, uh, yes and no. Right? Yes, uh, I think it, it matches that, that women are lagging behind in supply chain. And I think some of that is uh, the traditional that that supply chain comes out of manufacturing, manufacturing women are underrepresented. And some of it also comes from uh, that 
that women have a harder time getting promoted. So I think, you know, I see the, the wage gap. For me, it's it, when I say no, I don't see it. It's because I see this as a big opportunity. I see all the opportunities in women and minorities and and everybody who maybe uh, are not given the opportunities other places and they work at Elon and 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 so for me it's a huge opportunity for recruiting in situation where companies are won or lost you know companies futures are won or lost based on talent right and having the right talent on your team is just really a competitive advantage. So for me, having this more broad recruiting base and paying everybody fairly, no matter what their background or gender or whatever is based on merit and what the, and contribution and giving everybody the opportunity, just, I mean, it's, it's, it's fantastic, right? It gives, it gives me a hunting ground. So uh, that being said, I don't want anybody to be discriminated against. So I do work uh, for in a number of different groups to, to make sure that uh, we are working towards diminishing the pay gap and get pay equity. But seen from a sheer egoistical standpoint, it really allows me to recruit excellent, excellent staff members. And so, so there's some opportunity in every situation, I guess, sad as it is that we have a pay gap. And so let's just go back and go through some of those stats that you rolled for us at the beginning of the discussion. Did I hear 19 factories now? Uh, so we are in uh, 19 locations globally. So uh, we're headquartered in Silicon Valley and uh, really a fantastic place to be in that technology and supply chain are so intertwined. And so lots of innovation, especially in the AI field uh, that I'm following closely. And uh, then we have a subsidiary in Hong Kong managing the APAC region, a subsidiary in the Netherlands managing uh, EMEA. And then uh, from there, we are in different countries. It's Lots of it is customer driven. So we work with very large corporations, very big chunks of business, and uh, we will set up wherever we need to optimize their supply chain. And what makes a good customer for you? Oh, it's somebody who can laugh with us. And this is an answer you probably never had on the show. So it's somebody who can laugh and work with us. I'm saying this with a smile because we really want collaborative customers. And we have a very collaborative environment. It's somebody who cares about their brand. Uh, so uh, we mainly do work with Fortune 100 clients, but certainly here during the pandemic, we have taken in a lot of, of smaller uh, clients that provided COVID uh, kits. We also have taken in smaller clients that are of strategic uh, value or where we see, see exceptional potential. But mainly we work with Fortune 100 clients, very big brand names, and they really care about the the, the brand the, that that we, we provide flawless delivery, but also how we do it, that we are not... Uh, uh, violating the planet, that we are uh, have good labor practices, those type of things. So the entire corporate social responsibility that has become so much at the forefront because consumers just don't want to do business with companies that don't treat people and the planet well. And and so um, so uh, companies that are value aligned, I think, are very important for us. But uh, yeah, but then, and then we we take on projects from them for them, and they are typically global projects where we service uh, that uh, supply chain globally. We do everything from procurement, inventory management, um, uh, of course, production, manufacturing, and then uh, distribution, retail, B two C, B two B. Uh, returns, which is fortunately still mainly a U.S. problem. But uh, yeah, we do that as well. So let's think about that, you know, because supply chains have become pretty political, you know, over the last decade. And I'm not sure everybody's having a lot of fun. And I'm not sure everybody knows how to be collaborative. And I think as people think about coming into the supply chain, the ability to have a sense of humor is just really important because we go through some tense times, right? And uh, the ability to collaborate and think about the person in the other chair is a really key skill. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, many people ask whether empathy is an important leadership skill. And I think em- empathy is a really important business skill, not just for for people at the top of the uh, of the totem pole, but for everybody. Man, you need to be able to collaborate and move projects forward and understand what's going on. And 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 I think especially here during the pandemic, we we all of a sudden we have video calls where we see into uh, people's homes and you know we see, we hear the baby crying in the background and those type of things and we we you know it creates a totally different level of empathy. So so it's empathy for people's situation, but it's also understanding what's possible in their uh, organization, etc. But listen, uh, the, the last uh, 18 months have been really tough in supply chain. Uh, we have all lived on the edge for decades, really being able to plan for 98% and then winging 2%, but the 98% was just barely sliding by. And now we have so many disruptions and so much thing going on. I was thinking maybe we can plan for 50% and we've got to wing 50%. And I think that has created a big level of stress in supply chain and many supply chain professionals playing whack-a-mole right now. (laughs) And I'm concerned about that also because it may not be environment where so many women are thriving. And so we have seen uh, some attrition in the industry of women and, and, and I'm really sad to see that happen. So I hope that we can get into a little bit more of a planning stable environment such that uh, we can get people to, out of, of the stress mode and hopefully not too many will have a P- PTSD afterwards. Yeah, I don't know whether there's such a thing as supply chain PTSD. What do you think? Out of the pandemic, I think so, particularly for, I, unfortunately, I think a lot of women have had a lot of burden with children that are homeschooling and um, single parents, and it's been hard. But yeah. what one piece of advice would you have for people thinking about a supply chain career? Well, absorb as much as you can. Try to uh, get get the theoretical background so that you understand what's going on and then get involved. I mean, there are many ways to get involved, uh, uh, understand different departments where you're working, understand what's going on in the industry, follow, follow. There's lots of good newsletters out there. You put out one, Laura. So uh, there are lots of good conferences and newsletters. So uh, I definitely say be involved, uh, understand, learn, and understand that it's uh, it's a really dynamic environment. Um, that that what what you learned a couple of years ago may know some of the basics will be the same, but but there's lots going on. And I've got to say, I learn all the time. I, I you know I've been in supply chain for a long time, and I've, I've been uh, running Elon for a long time. And even so, I make a point of I probably spent uh, roughly ten percent of my time learning and it's a conscious decision and I expect my staff members to do the same so so that that would be a big uh, a, a big point is for everybody to to remember to learn all the time a lifelong learning and and understanding how dynamic things are is there a structured way that you learn uh, are there things you read or places you go that you could share Oh, I I read a lot. So I read uh, different uh, supply chain newsletters. I also listen to podcasts, of course. I read uh, books. I like to read new books. I'm part of also uh, different organizations that work on uh, uh, manufacturing 4.0. I like to call it supply chain 4.0 because I really think that it's it's not just about manufacturing, it's about supply chain and everybody is is starting to get that. So uh, we are part of the Manufacturing Leadership Council and Diverse Manufacturing Supply Chain Alliance and a number of other places where uh, there's intention learning I also I so that's on the supply chain side I I um, uh, I've been in CSCMP forever I'm uh, in in ASCM uh, a number of other organizations and follow what's going on and uh, participate uh, there and then seen from a leadership perspective I go to different leadership training typically that would be offsites where I participate in different uh, conferences or, 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 or development 
situations where where uh, companies are putting on leadership training or universities or things like that. And a lot of times I say I don't le- learn anything new, but I remember what I learned. Right? You sometimes forget it, and you've got to get it brought to the surface. And also in the context of where you are at in your life and your leadership career at that point of time. And so, uh, and then I'm part of uh, an, a large number of networks, and that has been tremendously helpful here during um, during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And that might be another thing for us, to, for, for a piece of advice that I can give is be part of, of different networks, have networks that can help you that are on your side, but also that can tell you when you're off on a wrong track or doing something that's not uh, not not really good for you or for your surroundings. And, and so having those type of networks is really key. I'm part of a group called C200, that's executive women. We have a number of business councils, so we have a number of support groups. We are all very good friends, so uh, that's really important. I've been in and visited for many years, also learning uh, leadership skills. Uh, uh, so, you know, I, I, I like to be in learning environments and I'd encourage everybody to do the same. Oh, I love it. Anna, the continuous learner, 10% of your time spent on structured learning. Thank you so much for joining the show today. And I would encourage everyone to follow the work that Alam is doing. And I love the fact that it isn't manufacturing 4.0, it's supply chain 4.0. And we really need to redesign the supply chain to improve the planet, improve economic health and the lives of people. Thank you so much. Until next time. Thank you. Pleasure. My name is Laura Ciceri, and I'm the founder of Supply Chain Insights, and I want to give you a personal invitation to join this year's Supply Chain Insights Global Summit. Now in its eighth year of doing this conference, we designed this for a unique experience for supply chain leaders to learn from technology leaders to think differently and drive new outcomes. We're hoping that you can make it on September 7th through the 9th in Franklin, Tennessee. In the conference, we handpick all the speakers and we design the conference for a unique networking experience so that you leave to build a guiding coalition for change. We hope to see you there.